few people wanted me to uh, go over uh, how mechanical shutter works and the quick basic principles of high speed sync and uh, it's really really simple you're not going to be like uh, cross-eyed at all so far as some stuff being complex in photography this is really not um, Camera's got two curtains. Uh, if you take enough cameras apart, <laughs> if you take one, you're not going to take your camera apart. But anyway, they're actually a dual set of curtains. Kind of like curtains like this on a stage, except we're looking at curtains like this and how they travel. First curtain opens. You have your, uh, you have your uh, window here, whether it's FX or DX. Exposes your sensor. The first curtain opens all the way. Depends on uh, what the shutter speed is. At, uh, depending on your camera, 250th of a second or less, first curtain opens all the way, the entire picture is exposed before the second curtain follows. So there is a brief period of time there where, and this is usually uh, your native uh, sync speed, okay, native sync speed of the camera where the entire image is exposed and the flash goes BAM! Okay, so let's take a look at things and let's explain high speed sync and how your flash operates in high-speed sync, and it's really, really simple. Okay, have everything here. First curtain opens. The entire picture, for a very, very tiny fraction, very tiny, of a second, is exposed. At depending on the camera, one two hundred fifty second, one two hundred one two hundredth of a second, sometimes a hair less, and then the second curtain follows, and then the entire. Uh, image sensor and the image has stopped being sampled at the sensor also. Now let's say uh, you're taking shutter speed without the flash at above your sync speed of your camera, whether that's 200th or 250th of a second. What happens then? Okay, You have is a rolling, not a rolling shutter, excuse me, <laughs> what you have is a rolling motion of exposure which goes like this. It's actually not that, let's say it's a 1 500th of a second. Here would be a pretty close representation of one five hundredth of a second. Now let's take a look at, say, one four thousandth of a second. First curtain opens, second curtain follows soon behind. So you have a slit, you have less exposure, one five hundredth of a second exposure over the entire thing. Now, once the shot is completely open and you're within the sync speed of your camera's capability, Obviously, your flash is going to fire. People, this is also the reason people ask, let me stick it in regular mode here, TTL or aperture priority mode. And people wonder, uh, ask me, say, why is it in high speed sync? Here's a regular flash firing, okay? The entire frame has been exposed at a sync speed of, say, 250th or 200th of a second when it opens up before the second curtain starts to, uh, uh, starts to roll. Boom, flash fires. The second curtain follows. Okay, then one 250th or one 200th or one 60th of a second uh, has been exposed. The gain in time of the shot has been taken. Shot's over with. People say, well, in high speed sync on my Nikon, why is it, uh, say, one one uh, you know, full power or uh, one 32nd or one 64th that I have a lot less power? It seems like my reach is a lot less because what is happening in high speed sync, if your camera is high speed sync capa capable, um, at say, you know, like the Nikon D500, where I'm shooting at one eight thousandth of a second high speed sync, where literally you've got a slit like this that's rolling up. And how? But first, before actually explaining that, let's uh, talk about if you go over the sync speed. And this is why, like a light meter, for example, uh, is uh, set uh, for uh, uh, for shutter priority, because you have to uh, go by your sync speed in the studio or outdoors or using your, your, your uh, studio. If you want to actually adjust things, you adjust the power on your, uh, your, uh, your uh, speed light or your studio strobes and then you set your ratios for your other studio strobes to match and stops or percentages. What you want it to be, say, for fill flash as opposed to your main light, two stops less than main. Background light or hair light, three or four stops uh, less than main. You're able to calculate those things by actually uh, through the meter and then actually uh, drop uh, the power settings on uh, your uh, speed light, uh, remote speed lights or your studio strobe or you're actually uh, able to uh, change uh, the aperture to what you want and either adjust the aperture or you're going to have to adjust the power levels but you need to be at your sync speed unless you're shooting high speed sync which most studio strobes don't have the capability of high speed sync. 
especially like the ones uh, from Pulse Buff. Those are IGBT controlled, so the capability of actually tricking a studio strobe, and there are ways to trick a studio strobe, so that it'll actually pulse light over the full duration of uh, the sensor being exposed. But say, for example, that my uh, sync speed is 250 of a second, and I accidentally drop it up to uh, 500th of a second. What happens is, is that uh, there's the uh, first uh, shutter uh, opens, and the second one uh, starts, then boom, the flash will fire, and you'll notice there'll be a black band down here. That black band is actually the second shutter blocking out the bottom of the shot. So how does high-speed sync work, like in an Nikon uh, camera or a Canon camera? It's really simple, like a regular DSLR. We're not talking about mirrorless right now, we're just talking about regular mechanical DSLRs. Uh, however, the same principle works not with the uh, electronic shutter, but with a mechanical shutter like a Fuji, for example, and other mirrorless cameras. How is it since uh, both uh, curtains, let's say one eight thousandth of a second or six thousand, or whatever your maximum high speed sync is on your camera, with a moving slit like this, if the flash is so insanely fast, and of course, you know, the flash is moving at the speed of light, right? How is it that I don't get a black bar in high-speed sync, and yet my power is, of course, reduced, I notice, at full power, when uh, the two curtains are moving like this over the scene? And the answer is really simple. Your camera, uh, excuse me, your uh, speed light actually does this number. Instead of flying a regular flash like this, and it looks like a regular flash to you because it's so quick your eyes can't see it, what it does is it does this number, okay, I'm set at 50 hertz, 22 so it does this number. This is what is happening when you actually have a, uh, your uh, first curtain, your second curtain at, say, 500 of a second, 1,000, 2,000, 4,000, 8,000. When it's traveling like a slit over your sensor and your high-speed sync mode on, you can't do it with this old flash. <laughs> this is just stroboscopic mode. You can't see it when you actually shoot. You're like, well, I don't see that when I'm high-speed. You're right, it's too fast for you. You can't see it, but... This is greatly slowed down, but this is exactly what your speed light is doing at high speed sync. And this is also the reason why your speed light is not able to put out as much power. Even if you got the power all the way up on your SB910, SB800, SB5000, the reason it can't put out as much power is because it actually has to charge those capacitors and drop the light to the xenon tube. And in high speed sync, since your speed light is doing this number is dropping a lot of flashes, even a lot faster than this. Your speed light is huffing and puffing. <laughs> and it can't, it can't put out as much power than if it is a single burst with the entire sensor exposed at the true mechanical sync speed where your at flash is able to fire just once because the entire sensor is exposed before the second curtain raises. So in high speed sync, when it's actually traveling in a slit like this, while you don't see it with your eyes, this is exactly what's going on, is this very very fast instead of and it looks exactly the same way because your eyes can't see it instead of this a single flash that's the difference not very complicated is it anyway I had a few people wanted me to explain uh, how uh, your curtains work and there are a pair of them in the back if you actually open up the back of an old film camera some of them, you'll actually see a dual set of curtains when you actually uh, crank uh, the uh, film forwarding lever. You'll actually see them, um, but they're in there, <laughs> moving like this. And uh, this is also the reason the Nikon D750 uh, had its last recall, by the way, is because the mechanism that controls the timing for these two curtains was jacked up. It is literally like the timing belt on uh, your car. It's like if your timing belt in your car is jacked up, it's like a timing belt is just a hunk of rubber. Yeah, but if your timing belt is screwed up, then your engine misfires and then all sorts of nasty crap goes down. It's like, eh, it's going to go down, man. Your car going to die. All because of a big-ass rubber called a timing belt. Well, it's not a timing belt in your camera, but it's the same electronic version of a timing belt, and that's why the D750 was recalled is because the electronic timing belt, not that that's what it's called, <laughs> was jacked up on the shutter mechanism assembly for the Nikon D750, and Nikon's like, my bad, <laughs> Nikon screwed you over. And they're like, oh yeah, we gotta do a bunch of recalls in that D750 because the timing is bad. The mechanism failed. I bet Nikon fired the people that uh, designed the uh, shutter mechanism for the Nikon D750 with all those recalls. So anyway, 
That is how your mechanical shutter works. That is how high speed sync works. High speed sync is nothing other than your curtains moving in a slit and your speed light going instead of bam. That's how it works. Okay. Hope that was clear and simple enough. Uh, <laughs> thanks. Bye.